people this week we're going to do a set I'm calling very cherry uh, this is going to be addition to my fruity collection and I'm starting off with some medium length coffin tips which I have prepped already and we're going to give them most of them a white coat of white firstly uh, this set took me about two and a half hours to do mainly because there was a lot of experimenting and trial and error happening with the with the cherry and I made a boo-boo so on one thing so I'll, we'll talk about that later but starting off as I said with white uh, I'm needing to have some more white polish so if anybody could recommend a good white polish that is not costing an arm and a leg oh there goes the hair um, and please don't say Madam Glam because even when they're half off that's more than I can afford to pay for one bottle of polish um, anyway moving on we're gonna use this Beatles uh, red glitter polish on the pinky we will be using this for the French uh, tip parts too but now we're gonna cure that and it is cured and now we go on to the second coat thin coats of white so we don't get wrinkling And now that I have done this set once, I feel like I could probably knock it out again in a lot faster time. But, you know, when you're doing something for the first time, it always takes longer. Especially when you have to experiment to get things to do what you want. Okay, there's the second coat about done. We're going to cure these. And... in we go and now we're back okay I'm going to start by doing the French tips on the thumb and one of the other ones the thumb and the middle finger I think it was and okay, now I've tried all the different tricks I've seen where people draw the lines on here and you know to get their French right and all that and frankly that to me is a lot more work and it still for in my case didn't improve my uh, French any better so I just eyeball it and I see you can see that this is kind of a squiggly line mess right now <clears throat> but I will get everything straightened out and cleaned up as we're going I think I've gotten a little better at doing the deeper French like this I mean, the, the shorter ones I, I could do I mean they're fairly easy but the I always have problems with the deeper ones for some reason so practice makes perfect I'm getting better still room for improvement but we're getting there okay now I'm gonna clean up with some alcohol on my brush uh, this these edges because obviously they're kind of a mess <laughs> now see how it's stained that red stained on my white I am I'm gonna go over it again it's not all gonna come off but what I ended up doing I thought I was gonna have to go back around there with white and clean it up but what I ended up doing later um, after I got these to what I thought were fairly decent uh, I went back in after they were cured with a with a uh, no lit, lit free wipe and alcohol and I just gave them kind of a hard scrubbing all along that edge and and the part that was stained on the white actually came off so I think I got lucky on that one but once I get the basic smile line where I want it then I will finish filling the bottom in with just the bottle brush because it's faster and I darn near knocked that one right over all right carefully on the side so I don't slot my line up again I think I did in a little bit but I'll straighten it out I'll even it out 
before I cure it here. And don't forget to cap the ends. Okay, now what I am going to do is get my skinny brush again. And I'm going to go around the line and fix it. Because there's some little bit of waggly looking stuff there that I'm not happy with. This is one of those days where you don't want to have a shaky hand going on. Okay, now I think I got it mostly smoothed out. Now I gotta smooth out the glitter polish again. And I made sure to put this glitter polish on here thick enough so I do not have to do two coats. And here we go with the other one, which I believe is the middle finger. Yeah, it is the middle finger. I had to look over on my nail desk to see because the set's still laying over there. I haven't put it away yet. And once again, we'll have the same issue with this one where I'm going to end up having to clean up. It didn't help that there's little bits of brush bristles sticking out of this cleanup brush that are getting into where the other ones are, you know, where the pot wet polish is. I'm going to have to see if I can't do something with those brushes. I've seen uh, several videos that say to soak them in hot water for a little while and then str that'll straighten them back out. So I've been meaning to, do, to try that, but I haven't gotten around to it. Sorry, I'm out of shot. We'll get back here in a second. Well, that one didn't come out too shabby. There's a little bit. I could see a little bit of stuff, but mostly pretty good. At least for me, anyway. Okay. And those are going to be going in for curing or not. <laughs> Hold on, I've, just, I've seen something I didn't like. There, better, okay. I think we're good now. Don't mess with it anymore, you're gonna ruin it. Put the brush down. Okay, <laughs> giving my own self a heart attack watching that. Okay, I'll do, I did the others off camera. Now we're gonna move on to the sploosh of cherry juice that's on the accent nails, which are the ring fingers in this case. And I'm just gonna use this glaze gel and I'm just gonna make some kind of a sploosh of, a random sploosh of juice on here. Now what I did was I got both of them done. Now I did the first one fine and then when I grabbed the next one off the other rack for the other hand I grabbed the index finger instead of the ring finger nail and being that they're, they're sized differently it did make a difference and I want the cherry to be on the ring finger so I ended up having to scrap one of them and start over after I was all done for the day, which did not make me a happy camper. As stupid little mistakes like that that just really irritate me. Okay, and we're just gonna, when I'm happy with the way it looks, smooth it out a little and then it will go in for curing. And... Okay, it's back out. Now we're going to use a uh, builder gel. This is a hard gel. And I am just gonna go over this whole thing and give it some dimension. Have I mentioned how much I hate working with builder gel? It uh, is so sticky and messy. I just, I really hate it. I only use it for stuff when I really need to. Oh, for Pete's sakes, why is this stuff popping up on my computer? 
Okay, but we're just going to go over the whole sploosh. I'm trying to make a bigger like blob of the of the uh, builder gel at the end of the you know the end of the drip part it really didn't need to have a big bunch in the middle but I got a little carried away with it on here because the cherry is going to go in the middle so you're not going to see that anyway but once I get it fully covering all the red trying to get it to smooth out a bit and we should be just about there I think oh wait there's that whole other one doesn't look like it even has any on there oh yeah it does it's the way it was shining with the light okay we might be good here maybe okay now I've cured that and now I'm going in with the second coat to give it a little bit more dimension now I cure it for two minutes with the with this this builder gel it may not need that long but that's just how I go with it I like to over cure my stuff just to be safe and we're just doing the same thing we just did only a second layer and no matter how careful I am with when I'm working with this stuff I manage to get it everywhere somehow one little bit of it gets on my gloves and then it just get people that I don't notice and then it just gets spread everywhere okay we have cured that again and now I am going to clean off the tacky layer now here's where I went out of order too before I even started with the cherry sploosh I should have done my matte top on that nail but I did not so now we're going to have to do an extra step in there. So if you guys are doing something like this, do your matte top on the base nail first, then do your build up your stuff on there. Okay, so now I am going to go in with the matte top. I splurged a while back and bought some Model 1's matte top. I'm trying to find a, a good one. And they had it on sale a while back. Um actually it might have been when they had prime day that's been a good while now but I got a couple bottles of it so I was hoping this is the first time I'm using it I was hoping it was gonna be good and not you know not yellow it's nothing worse than doing a nice set of white nails and you matte top them and then it then the matte top goes yellow on you and ruins your colors so that is why I'm searching for another one. Oh, there's a hair again. So far, uh, uh, this one uh, worked pretty well for me. I'm most happy with it. I mean, it might have had the very slightest, slightest tinge of yellow, but you could barely tell. And that is when, it, if it was, if you put on more than one coat, the more coats you put on, the yellower it's going to get. And that's with any kind of matte. As far, as far as I have been able to tell in my experience with it okay now I'm just going in with my normal uh, tempered top coat and I'm just going to go over the sploosh part to shine it get it shiny again so it's going to look wet now if you had done this in the correct order like I did not <laughs> uh, you wouldn't need to do some of these steps your mat your base color would have been matte already so you would have just needed to gloss this back up after the wipe down of the uh, builder gel once I get this top on here I will cure that again and then we will have a nice shiny sploosh of cherry juice on there ok 
Okay, I've cured it and we're moving on to, we're going to start on the 3D cherry element. Now this is what I did to get the stem for the cherries. Um, I am stripping down, uh, this is just a twist tie thing that came off of, I don't know what. I had been saving a bunch of these because I was using them outside to tie my plants up. So came off of, I don't know what, a bread wrapper or something, but I'm stripping all this plastic part of it off. Now I've sped this up too because it took me a while to get through this. I tried to do this before this part with, uh, I had a, br a paintbrush that had really coarse bristles to it and I was using the bristles to, to coat with the green polish to uh, for the stems, but the polish kept beating up on the bristle thing. So it, looked, it, it had little like balls all the way down the whole thing of where the polish beat it up. And obviously that's not what a cherry stem looks like. So once I get this plastic stripped off, which we're just should be just about there now, And we don't need a whole bunch of it because I'm only doing two two stems. Okay, I'm using this Beetles polish in that color of green, kind of, it's kind of a darkish green, and I'm just going to paint the wire with it, and I'm going to try and smooth it out. And as soon as I get it to where I'm happy with it, so you can see it's starting to bead a little. But as soon as I can get it smooth, I'm going to pop it in the lamp and I'm just going to twirl it around in my fingers until it's cured and then I'm with this little bit of more of a blob on the end and cure it <clears throat> so it has that little piece at the end of the stem like you get when you tear off the stem there's always a little like chunk of stuff at the end okay now we're moving on to the cherry I'm using red carving gel for this Um, what I started off with here, that little blob there, I, I, I determined was not going to be big enough. I needed it to be bigger. So we're going to double the size of it. And I'm just going to make a ball out of it. Easy peasy. And then I am going to use, I was using the end of a paintbrush which really was a little too fat to kind of make the dimple at the top where the stem is going to go in that caused it to squish down somewhat so then I had to roll it a little more but eventually it kind of looks more like an apple right now but anyway there we have it and I've got my stem piece I'm just going to use my nippers and cut some of that off and I will just shove it down inside of there. Kind of reminds me of that game when we were, you're a real little kid, that game called Hi Ho Cherryo, where you have to go along and you're picking the cherries off the trees and stuff. I don't know why that just popped into my head, but anyway, moving on. I'm dabbing a little bit of alcohol on top of the, the juice sploosh. So when I put the carving gel on there, it will kind of melt the carving gel slightly, the alcohol, and as it cures, then it will be firmly attached to there, to the, to the nail. Now you could glue it on with glue. I, I prefer to do it this way. And there we have our cherry on there now, and we just got to cure it. When I'm done playing with it, I'll put it into cure and I cure the carving gel stuff for two minutes. That's usually sufficient to get it fully cured. And in we go and that's it for the cherry. I'll do the other one off camera. Moving on we have some cherry stickers. And I have sped this part up too because uh, you guys have seen me play stickers a gazillion times now. And this video was already kind of getting long, so I just wanted to now see that mess. I must have had something on my gloves now. I'm going to get out at some point here a silicone tool and use that to, to tap the stickers down because I obviously had something on my gloves that I didn't want to keep getting on the white polish.
and I didn't want to go overboard with the stickers on on this one because it's going to have crystals on the top also I was able to if I I dipped that silicone tool in a little bit of alcohol and I was able to clean off the little bits of glitter that you saw on there and other schmutz that got on I don't know how all this stuff happens sometimes it just seems like it does okay there's one I'm doing three down the center of this uh, this is the index finger and then we're going to have one little little one at the bottom Okay, and then we can move on to the other, the, uh, wait, that wasn't the, was that the, I've confused myself now. Well, the other one of these that had the French on it, but not the thumb. Ah, oh, my brain. <laughs> You know how they say you get pregnancy brain? I think you get uh, after menopause brain too, where, where it doesn't function properly. Because holy smokes, lately, I don't know what's happening here. Okay, now I'll finish the rest of the stickers off camera and we, we should be ready to move on. Here's where we are so far. Okay, and now we're moving on. I am going to go over all of these with my tempered top coat. Well, not not the not the accent now, but the rest of them. And you may be wondering why I'm putting this on the whole nail uh, when I'm going to have part of them be matte, is because I want my stickers to be sealed in there really well under this hard gel, so I don't have to worry about anything peeling or coming off or soaking off in the water any of that nonsense. and the thumb okay then we're going to cure these and did we go no we didn't go yet okay now we're going to cure them okay now i'm going to do matte top just on the white part of these frenches so i'm carefully going around there i was able to just do it with the bottle brush you could get your detailer brush out if you want and do that around the, the edge of where the, the glitter part is, but I didn't. I'm too lazy. Hey, okay, that entire one there gets matted, and then the thumb, same thing. Just go carefully around that edge. And then we're ready to cure those. And we have, and we're moving on to the crystals. Last, almost the last step. And silver caviar beads. And gem glue. The usual cast of characters. And here we go. I'm going to put some glue. We're just doing a simple cuff on the thumb and the other one with the French. And we'll start off in the middle with the biggest one I'm going to use. And then we will just work out to either side, getting a little smaller as we go. I have sped this section up too because you guys have seen me do crystals a bunch of times and it is time consuming. So I didn't want to make you guys sit through this any longer than necessary. Little dot more of glue. And once we, I get these uh, approximately where I want them, then we'll move on to the caviar beads. I've been looking for some more of the real teeny tiny silver caviar beads. The ones that I'm using now are kind of the next level up. There's, there's some that are even smaller than these, which I prefer for doing these uh, in between the crystals, especially when you get down to the tiny crystals. Sometimes the caviar beads are bigger than 
you know, then the crystal seems like, or, you know, they're just too big. Unless you can get the teeniest, tiniest ones, and I haven't been able to find them. I can find them in those little wheels, but I already got so many of those that I've used all the tiny ones out of, and now I'm left with all the, the other ones that I rarely use. So I'm trying to find some place where I can buy just those. I've gotten a couple of them, packages of them with just silver caviar bees, but they're this, this size. They're not the tiny, tiny ones. So I'm looking for those too, along with white polish. But we're just going to place these in between all the crystals to fill those gaps in. And then there'll be one at the end of the line like that to finish it off. Now I just try to get them in the in the general vicinity of where I want them to be. I'm usually not real picky about moving them around yet. There's a fuzz there. Okay, ooh. <laughs> now that they're all on there, now I can start making sure I can get them all tucked up where I want them, in between where they're supposed to go, move everything around. And once I'm happy, that would be cured. And there it goes. Okay. Now I try to be careful with the glue, but I got a little bit of sloppage there. So now I'm just taking a tiny bit of the matte top. I'm just going to go along that edge where the glue overflow was. And then I'm going to kind of try and feather it out a little so I don't have a line. So, you know, and then we cured it and we're done. Bam. Nice summer cherry set for you. I hope you like them. If you do, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a like. And if you want to see more, I upload a new video every Saturday. So go ahead and subscribe. I thank you so much for watching. It means a whole lot to me. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.